I just picked up the 1989 horror film, The Cellar, on Blu-ray from Vinegar Syndrome. This was my first viewing of the movie, which was directed by Kevin Tenney, who was responsible for some fantastic horror films in the 1980s. Now the back of the Blu-ray references The Cellar as being a troubled production. So is the movie worth checking out, or should it have stayed buried? Let's find out. The Cellar opens in 1930s Texas during a violent windstorm. So they're drilling for oil or something, and a kid finds a random spear stuck in the ground. The kid removes the spear and ends up taking a rabbit's foot dangling from it. A nasty, blob-like liquid immediately bubbles out of the ground. Bad idea, apparently, as a local Native American man flips out over this. The rabbit paws. Where are they, boy? What did he do with the rabbit paws? Come back! Come back! So the kid screwing around with the spear causes the weird liquid to spread and immediately kill a litter of puppies. It apparently eats away all their skin. Strike one, movie. Now I don't give a crap about human characters dying, but animals are another story. So the kid's dad is killed and we flash forward to the present. The kid is now an old man and he sells his house to a young couple with a baby. The dad's son from a previous marriage, named Willie, arrives to stay with them for the summer. Now we eventually find out that an evil force inhabits the land that the house is built on. This evil force was created by a powerful Native American medicine man to kill the white man. The war council forced him to create a creature that would destroy the white man. He conjured together pieces of the most savage creatures he made. The perfect killing machine. Problem is, the creature ended up being too powerful and started killing Indians as well. So this guy tends to the land and tries to keep the evil at bay which includes watering tractors, I guess. Now, Willie has a run-in with the monster, and the rest of the movie has him trying to destroy it. My expectations were actually a little high going into this one. So, were they met? Well, let's talk about what works. The cast is pretty solid, and the lead kid, Willie, is actually pretty likable. The film is well-directed by Kevin Tenney, and the monster, which is shown very sparingly, looks awesome. The basic storyline of a kid trying to destroy a monster while also dealing with skeptical adults is fun. So why wasn't I blown away by this? I think the biggest issue was the script. The storyline was a little too overly complicated, I think, with the history of the monster and the evil crows and that weird liquid that only kills animals and babies, apparently. Newborn animals, infants, babies. They're all susceptible because their souls are not yet one with their bodies. Do you understand that? Come on, chief. I really think that the storyline should have been simplified a bit more. Also, this 80s creature feature is rated PG-13. Now, I'm not saying a movie has to be rated R to be any good, but this movie definitely could have used some gore to liven things up a bit. Now, we do get some severed fingers and a few brief bloody shots, but that's it. Now, it's not a bad movie by any means. Far from it, in fact. It's just not quite as good as I was expecting an 80s Kevin Tenney horror movie to be. The Blu-ray contains two versions of the film, the regular version that was released back in 1989 and the never-before-seen director's cut. I did a quick comparison and the director's cut is the superior version. The regular cut is missing lots of scenes, adds in some nonsensical voiceovers, and has a different musical score. Definitely stick with the director's cut for this, at least with your first viewing. Vinegar Syndrome did a 2K restoration on both versions, and the results are solid. Now, the director's cut does have some print damage, and some shots it's a bit heavy. But it's not bad, and it actually kind of adds to the film, in my opinion. Some scenes also look just a tad too dark, but it's not too bad. Special features are plentiful, with both versions containing a director and cast commentary. But my favorite is the 46-minute making of documentary. We get interviews with the director and some of the cast and crew, and they go over every aspect of this troubled production. The original director was fired after a few days, and Tenney was brought on to save the production. Everyone is very candid about the final film, and I really love these making of documentaries. This is where Vinegar Syndrome and the specialty Blu-ray labels really shine. Vinegar Syndrome has included a beautiful thick slipcover. <laughs> Reversible art is included as well, and I definitely prefer the new art to the old one. In the end, The Cellar was a good, but not quite great, film. I'd definitely like to watch it again with my expectations more in check. But even still, it's an interesting little movie, and it's definitely worth checking out.